Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all the way. If you keep on the sunny side of life. My name is Joe Martin. I'm the pastor of First Baptist Church in Toledo, Washington, not far from Mount St. Helens. I get to live in a beautiful place and work with great people. I want to talk to you this in this message about the word of the week. The word of the week is anger. You know, someone one time said, anger is just one letter away from danger. And there's a lot to be angry about in these days. I know you feel that way. I have angry people talking to me all the time on all sides. Sometimes my ears hurt from it. Some of you are angry because the government and the courts and everything else, the various states, they say that your side lost this last election. Others of you are angry because you've been told the election was stolen. Many of you are angry because people won't accept the loss of the election, that it's, you, you feel like um, that, that you just can't imagine why people won't accept it. Others are angry um, uh, that there was an election at all because their mailbox was jammed up and their news feeds and their shows were interrupted by all the advertisements. <laughs> People always have something to say, but anger seems to be the one thing they all seem to have in common. People are also angry about the pandemic. There's the crowd that says no mask. They are angry at the sheep who are deceived into believing this hoax that hurts the economy and limits their personal freedom. And you might feel that way. You say, oh, I don't, I'm not wearing a mask. I'd never wear a mask. Or the people who are in favor of these precautions that think that their 400,000 friends and family members that have died and, and they see non-maskers are as unself or selfish and ignorant individuals. Now, I'm not telling you, um, not weighing in here, I'm just saying this is the tensions that we're dealing with. I heard a lady say the other day that she now looks at everyone and wonders in her mind, I wonder if they're with us or against us. I wonder if they're on my side. You see, anger is just one D away from danger. And it's dangerous for us to be in this position. Now, I'm going to talk more about this on the weekend when we talk about loss and grief. Because oftentimes when we have real loss in our life, no matter what it's from, anger comes along with it. But this is a danger on another level. There is danger to your faith. There, for your faith, there is danger. You see, you cannot walk by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, and be filled with anger, with malice. You have to choose, my friends. I don't care how many Bible plaques you have or how long you've been involved in church. You have to choose. It's God or your grievance. Jesus said it like this, Matthew 6, 14. And by the way, Jesus was writing in a time of great turmoil and political um, oppression. He said in Matthew 6, 14, For if you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. Jesus said earlier in this Sermon on the Mount, He said, anyone who is angry with their brother is guilty of hellfire. You see, this is important to remember that we cannot stay in this posture. It's danger to your faith. You know, obeying Jesus Christ should be vastly more important to you than maintaining a political grudge. And that goes for everybody. Secondly, anger is this, is 
is very close to danger and it's danger to your family. You know, you can hurt each other when you get angry, whether it's for five minutes, five minutes or five years. You see, you say things when you're angry. You put things on Facebook when you're angry. You do things that you wouldn't utter otherwise do. You think things that you would normally not think when you're angry. You don't do your best thinking when you're angry. As a matter of fact, scientists tell us that when people are angry, the reasoning part of their brain, the prefrontal lobe, shuts down. It, it constricts. It doesn't work as well. This is why when you're angry, you can get caught up in things. You can jump to conclusions. You get tunnel vision. You become susceptible to conspiracies based on confirmation bias. And the confirmation bias is this. You're already angry about somebody, something, and somebody comes along and says, well, you know what I heard, and it fits in with what you're mad about, and you just add it to the pile, and it grows and grows. And this makes you able to justify your not only the anger that you have, but to become even more angry, and off you go. And boy, have we seen that. What ends up happening is we alienate people who are really important to us, who matter to us, and we end up cutting them out of our lives and hurting not just them, but ourselves. And this is not just a danger to your family, because many families are experiencing this. It's also a danger to your friends. You see, what happens when we get angry and we allow anger to control our lives, you burn and you, you ruin friendships over things that are passing, that are in the moment, that are in the midst of a crisis, and boy, have we had them. I just want you to think about that no temporary opinion, whether it's about politics or something else, is worth it. As a matter of fact, Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. You know what he's saying? That real friendship is a constant. Uh, good times and bad times, and people, um, when people are hard to deal with. We live in a society where once upon a time, we worked things through because we needed each other. But because of all of our wealth and our technology, we become more independent, which breaks into a radical independence that can make us say, well, I don't really need my parents. I don't really need my kids. I don't really need my friends. I don't really need my church. I don't really need anybody anymore. I'm just going to be a congregation of one. And the sad part about friendship when anger is involved is you might not be angry at your friend, but you may pull them into your grievance, into your anger. Are they into yours? And you and they will help poison each other instead of help sweeten each other. So that's why Proverbs 22, 24 says, Do not associate with a man given to anger, or a woman for that matter. Or go with a hot-tempered man, somebody who's always getting spun up. They see something online, they see something on the news, and they get spun up like somebody I knew who kept having to get TVs because he'd throw things at his flat screen. He says, do not associate with a man given to anger or go with a hot-tempered man or you will learn his ways or her ways and find a snare for yourself. Oh, so many people right now are snared up into things. And not only is it a danger to your friends, but it's also a danger to fellowship. You know, as a pastor... I try to love everybody, I listen to people, and I try and be respectful. But I don't see that that's always going on. People always want to have me somehow weigh into their side, and if I don't, it's, they take it as a personal betrayal. 1 John 3.14 says it like this, We know that we passed out of death into life because we love the brethren. He who does not love abides in death. You know, you can't love someone when you're mad at them. I don't care what you say. It's just not possible. It's the antithesis. Now, you can forgive them and start loving them, or you can love them and get mad at them and then forgive them and start loving them. But while you're mad at them, you can't love them. In 1 John 3, uh, 15, it says, Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. 
and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. And then he goes on and he says, well, you say, well, what do you mean by love? We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. This is the other John 3.16. This is why fellowship is so endangered by your anger and by the anger that we see everywhere else, and especially in churches that are being ripped and shredded apart by these various cultural and, and stressful things going on in our society. We know love by this, how? That he laid down his life for us, not just people that were good or people that we all agreed with, but people um, that shared his particular politics. By the way, Jesus didn't embrace a political um, agenda. As a matter of fact, all the dominant parties of Jesus' day didn't like him and wanted to see him dead. You see, you lay down your life for the brothers. Sometimes that lay, means laying down your grievance. That means sometimes it lay down your opinion. You see, you know what love does? It's love, not anger, that reveals you as a child of God. It is your love. By this, all men will know you are my disciples, by your love for one another. It is, you can't let anger drive you. You can't, we can't let, and us, as, a, as fellowships, we cannot let anger drive us apart. Because you see, what the world needs right now is the unexplainable community. Not a bunch of ragers calling their anger righteous indignation because they want to justify their carnality. Anger is a danger to fellowship, but it's also a danger to our country. You know, Abraham Lincoln made a statement. He said, we cannot be enemies. We really can't. We can't be enemies and, and have a, a civic life together. You know, you and I, as followers of Jesus, have much work ahead. It's your job, if you're a follower of Jesus, you know, you're, if you're a follower of Jesus, you're not called to be a social media warrior or a political partisan. That's not your job. You're to represent him. You must be what he called you to be, which is a peacemaker, if you want to be called a child of God. You know, Matthew 5, 9 says in one translation, happy are those who work for peace. God will call them his children. Peacemaking is hard work. It takes a lot of, well, it takes a lot of patience. Sometimes it takes some tongue biting. Last week I made a venison and barley soup and I was excited and I have a hard time making small soups. You know, we had a big family and I have a hard time scaling them back, but I was trying and I had it all together and I began to try and put the spices in and I just put too much pepper in it. And when I tasted it, I thought, oh no, I ruined it. It was just flaming hot. And then I thought for a second, ah, oh, I almost ruined it. But then I was saved by my special sauce. Right out of my own orchard, it was this, this special stuff. Honey, now this is a little granulated, but it's so good. And I put a, some of this honey in it. I sweet, sweetened it. Oh, the soup went from that too hot to stomach kind of soup to that sweet, savory delight. I wish you could have had some. I wish I could remember how I did it. <laughs> you know, we need to be a mix. We need to be in that mix to bring peace and to make things sweeter. You know, when I make a cup of tea, I take a little bit of lemon and I put that lemon in there and sometimes I put too much in. I get a little bit ahead of myself and I squeeze a little bit too much in. But you know, I always have the solution. I can put that honey in and sweeten it up so that when it's all in the mix. Now that is a good cup of tea. Now, what I'm trying to tell you today is this. You can... Be that person. Anger is just one letter away from danger, but you can keep it back. You can save your faith. 
and you can save your family from the ravages of anger. And you can save your friends and your friendships from the ravages of anger. And you can save your fellowship, whether you go to TFBC or, 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 or to another fellowship. You can save that fellowship. And you may even play a role in saving your country. How? Well, I want to tell you that you need to be doing that work. You need to be that honey in that hot mix. I want you to, I, can't, I don't, really don't have much more time to, not today, but I do want you to listen to this weekend's message about walking through loss. We're going to talk more about this, about how to, how do I deal with my own anger? I'm going to talk about how to clean out your wounds and deal with those hurts that you have where anger has gotten into those places, where maybe it was a job loss, or maybe it was a, a breakup in a marriage or a relationship, or maybe it was your last church, or maybe it was what else we've talked about, the political thing, or arguments with friends or family. We're going to talk about how you can clean out the wounds out of that anger. And, and also, yes, the loss of sometimes it goes with grief. There can be great anger. There are a lot of angry people out there, and you can't help them if you're one of them. So it's important that we remember the old song. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. I hope that that happens with you. You be that person, that part of the solution. God bless you.